it is exceedingly rare in architecture for a new material to emerge. Perhaps the last time this occurred was at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution and the emergence of the steel frame, which gave rise to the skyscraper. For us, at the beginning of this new Industrial Revolution, that new technology is additive manufacturing, or 3D printing at the scale of a building. For me, my first experience with this new technology was with this project, AMI, or Additive Manufacturing and Integrated Energy. This was the first project of a consortium uh, of uh, component entities, including the University of Tennessee College of Architecture and Design, the architecture firm Skidmore, Orings and Merrill, and Oak Ridge National Laboratories. We call this our Governor's Chair Consortium. This project was intended to explore the possibility of pairing a prototype dwelling with a vehicle, and that they could both produce and share their own electrical power. Linking these two prototypes was the idea that both would be 3D printed. This is BAM, the Big Area Additive Manufacturing System. At the time we used it, this was the largest 3D printer in the world, measuring 20 feet by 8 feet and capable of printing something 5 feet tall. The material with which we print is carbon fiber reinforced ABS plastic. And as you can see in the image, it deposits a thin bead of this material in the molten state. And as it cools, we can build other layers upon that. The interesting thing about this material is it gives us this interesting corduroy texture, something that will come back in, in uh, a few more slides. The main thing to take away here is that this is a new technology, and we were using this for the very first time, and this really started to uh, create an area of expertise for us here in the Tennessee Valley. This is Amy as it's being assembled. So the piece that you saw in the previous image was one C or one half of a structural ring. Here you can see a structural ring completed and being hoisted into place at Clayton Homes facility here in Knoxville. Notice that the most exciting thing about this is the ability now to create in one component things like windows, doors, exterior enclosure, structure, all flowing together in one complete form in the interior. This is, I think, where architects get the most excited. Not only can we accommodate multiple different architectural components, we can have the windows, the wall, and the structure all come together. We can now integrate very complex systems like lighting, or in this case, heating and air conditioning. You can see in the distance, on the left, the 3D printed automobile paired with Amy. Amy was sort of a moonshot for additive manufacturing. It secured us a place in history as being one of the largest 3D printed components ever made, but it also sort of gave us the opportunity to think through multiple applications of these technologies as they come together. Just in the way Amy and the paired automobile could share energy, both being hybrid vehicles and a, and a solar powered house, we were able to look at the differences between additive manufacturing at the scale of architecture and at the scale of industrial design. This project has toured the United States as a prototype, and it has also been awarded multiple times for its engineering and its architecture. An interesting thing that architects do when we start on a new project is we typically look back at previous work to draw inspiration. When we began with Amy, we found that there was really no previous construction method that gave us any insight into what we were trying to achieve. Processes of accretion and deposition, much like this insect chrysalis, are much more analogous to what we're trying to do. So as we look back at precedent, we find ourselves looking more at natural phenomena and less at previous buildings. The other aspect of our Governor's Chair program is we tried to drive the research into the classroom. So what you see here is our beginning studio where we challenged groups of graduate students to think through the design of their own Amy type project. In this studio, we looked at four precedents. We looked at seashells, the bone structure of human bones, we looked at dragonfly wings and the ancient craft of origami. Perhaps most interesting here, the students that were looking at the origami precedent realized that seemingly flimsy paper took on structural rigidity when folded correctly. This is analogous to the thin surfaces we can create with additive manufacturing. But perhaps most exciting in this project is the students worked out a way to 3D print hinges directly into the material, thereby making a prototype that could be collapsed for transit and then expanded when erected on site. One of the things perhaps most compelling to folks outside of architecture looking at this material is the fact that we can potentially close the loop of life cycle, meaning that this material can be reground, reused multiple times without any de degradation in its characteristics. In fact, now we can print with totally bio-based materials, things like resins, and then reinforce those resins with completely bio-based fibers like bamboo. Very soon, we will be able to print a building completely only out of the soil we find on site. So along the lines of this reuse, we embarked upon a project with local motors, 
the innovators of the world's first 3D printed automobile. They challenged a group of our students to create an architectural element that would act as a screen wall between their open office and their conference room. The screen wall was intended to be of a budget of a certain amount of polymer. At some point in the future, we will regrind this and reprint it. This particular studio looked at the tribicula, or the small scale structure of human bone, and developed this open lattice screen. At some point in the near future, I look forward to seeing what this material looks like in a different reincarnation. So, because the materials that we use are in 3D printing are rather fungible, meaning that we can make virtually anything with it, but those files themselves begin as digital files, you can think of this as the world's first digital material. Because it begins digitally, or as a 3D computer model, we're able to apply all sorts of computational techniques to these forms. We can optimize, we can add parametrics, we can visualize. I think that is the, the key to understanding this as a digital material. So for this project, this was our second time working with local motors. They were happy with the previous project. They invited us back to take a look at doing a reception desk for their showroom here in Knoxville. This is AMPT, or Additive Manufacturing Parametric Design. The challenge given to the students was to create something that leveraged the possibility of 3D printing, but also created a form that could only be made by that sort of technology. At the beginning of this project, the students thought through the functional aspects of the reception desk, storage, seating, screen wall, reception desk, and created a unique section for each one of those functions and then strung those sections together as a continuous surface. That surface and that model created the basis by which we applied our parametric analysis. We were able to optimize for weight reduction, for structural optimization, and we even looked at other things like geometry. As soon as we were able to create one of those forms, because it was a digital model, we can then print a scale model or a full-size component. Working with the engineers at Local Motors, we were able to slice this component apart, orient it for printing, and create the prototype. This is the way it looks today. So, very much in keeping with the, the uh, initial brief, this is a form that can only be created with 3D printing. And perhaps most interesting about the parametric overlay, this project now weighs 50% less in its final form than it did in our original concept. Often with working in emerging fields, unintended consequences come up. We refer to those unintended consequences as failures or glitches, but sometimes those glitches are an insight into the technology and the material. In this student studio, we gave a range of students various glitches to allow them to explore and to better understand the technology. This particular project, the student was given the propensity for 3D printed objects to be simplified from complete convex curved surfaces to a series of facets. So this student took a very well-known chair, created multiple versions of that chair with fewer and fewer facets, a low poly version, if you will. He optimized it for print speed, least possible material, and avoided conflicting with ergonomics. So it's possible to think about the new responsibilities added to the designer now as a negative. If you think about it, the architect's model becomes the template for the final piece with no shop drawings, no construction documents, and no skilled tradespeople in, in between. This could be a new responsibility, but to a certain extent, this harkens back to the ancient tradition of the architect as master builder. This, the final project we've been working on with Local Motors, is a transit stop for the autonomous vehicle Ollie. So in this project, the students were looking at all aspects of the design and protection of this component. They studied dendritic forms found in nature to develop a single point canopy structure. They imagined the way that this thing could be assembled and developed a self-orienting joint system. This project can be erected by two people in only a few hours, and we look forward to the prototyping of this soon. So, will the future be 3D printed? Absolutely, in some form it will. The things that will make it interesting will be ideas that architects will get interested in, like the fact that we can now print complex shapes, colors, curves, forms, geometries, where the added complexity creates no additional cost. We can also work in the complex computational systems previously described. But perhaps the most exciting aspect is the potential to finally reduce the embodied energy of our materials and eventually close the life cycle loop. Thank you.